Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be chatting about a couple of new Disney Plus Next Phase figures, as well as getting into that mailbag and answering some listener questions. This is episode 507. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And on select figures here at Shop.WizKids.com, you can use code DIAL10, D-I-A-L-H-10. That's a 1 and a 0 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. On shop.wizkids.com, not usable with certain promos, pre-order figures, and a few other uneligible pieces. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. Oh, what's going on, Simeon? Do you want to click it, Calder? Oh, you have no idea how much I want to click it, Simeon. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, jumping right into what made us happy this week, that was a hilarious project. Yeah, Man. yeah, it was. That was awesome. I, I can't wait for people to... Uh, figure out what they want to clicks and if they want to clicks it here hopefully very soon ish a week ish maybe maybe i don't know hopefully soon hopefully soon because it's uh it's it's one of the most fun projects we've done as dial h it feels like i say that every time we do a new video project but maybe that's just because every time we think of something new or fun to do i think it's it's one of the less intricate ones that we've done uh, especially like at, coming off of next phase, but uh, it no, is it's definitely not as one of the as goofiest ones for sure. It's up there in it being goofy, I suppose, and it's less complicated. And yet, the filming was also a lot harder than yes. other times. I think where this project became its most difficult was all the pre-production versus post-production. The the filming, especially, kind of going off the cuff that day especially when we had talked about doing something like this for two year, <laughs> years or so which is really funny um but finally being able to do it and then yeah a few other behind the scenes things and waiting on other people to uh make certain aspects of it also was a lot of work so it was a lot of post-production but quite fulfilling i'm pretty happy the way it turned out i don't think anything is perfect but i think it's pretty dang good with the time constraints and everything else we were working on yes yes yeah. Now the, the listener is fully confused and has yeah, no they have no idea. About. Patreon, you know what? Oh, I guess yeah, fact, patrons do. Patreon members do know what we're talking about because they get to see the videos early. Now this isn't the full video, but if you join for as little as five dollars a month, oh, you get access to our Discord. You get an action token every single month, which is shipped out. Uh, do, 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 quarterly, that is correct, quarterly. So every three months, Patreon shipments and rewards are shipped out, as well as giveaways and all sorts of really cool stuff happens over on Patreon. But five bucks is that nice entry-level fee that gets you access to the Discord, all these cool behind-the-scenes videos, and then also all these videos that are early. Mostly a lot of skits get showcased early on here, which is what Simi and I are talking about right now. So if you haven't yet, feel free to join the Patreon and support the things we do. Yeah, flawless, flawless Patreon plug. But this is seriously such a fun, such a fun project that I'm happy finally exists because there's a lot of projects that were always in like the works that were just kind of up in the air. We kind of mentioned them for fun that sometimes don't get realized, but I'm happy that this one got to exist. It's really cool. I think I think people have fun with it. Agreed. The yeah, the unlisted video has like 30 something views. And honestly, 20, <laughs> 20 of those might just be us. I don't I've rewatched it quite a few times. It's pretty fun. But all right, let's let's just jump into some quick news this week, guys. Before we get into any fun dial spoilers, uh, I do just want to say there is some Adepticon prizing updates. So on the WizKids Hero Clicks page, 
They meant, they say, unfortunately, Marvel Hero Clicks Deadpool Weapon X has encountered some unexpected shipping delays. We sincerely apologize for being unable to match our initial plans to make this up to you, to our fans, who have already planned travel. We're modifying our pricing to the, for the championship events. This is only for the 300 modern events. Substituting a next phase retail chase booster for the Deadpool Weapon X retail chase boosters. So before... Uh, a few places we're going to get a Deadpool Weapon X Chase Booster, right? Which is crazy impressive because that set is the next set to come out after Next Phase when Next Phase is being released Adepticon Weekend. So it honestly, it makes more sense that it's a Next Phase Retail Chase Booster that's winnable versus a Weapon X Chase Booster. So that's one little switch up, which I really don't think is too big of a deal. And then they said they'll also ship a complete set of Deadpool Weapon X to the championship winner during the set's revised pre-release window. So during pre-release for Deadpool Weapon X, there will be a complete set sent to the Adepticon champion, which is still an insanely good prize to get an complete set in pre-release time. Uh, even getting a complete set of like the newest set would already be a great prize, yeah. but then getting a pre-release, the next set, that's pretty awesome. So I think... They did update their event page for prizing and information. Just some people were asking questions, a little confused about like what all was happening. They're it's just going to substitute. It's not as early, but it's better, I think. Right. Like you won't be getting it earlier or as early as they originally thought, but it is like a better set of prizing. Yeah, exactly. You know, an I mean, an entire set of Deadpool Weapon X, which we know and pretty much nothing about like what five or six sculpts are. So that's pretty cool. That was the quick update here for prizing. They've also had a few design insight articles talking about trick arrow, marksman keyword, uh, a few things like that. But Simeon, do you want to take us to a website that we haven't visited here in actually quite a while on Dial H? What's that? Uh, could it perhaps be the land of... I don't know how to describe this website without sounding mean. So just Reddit, I guess. <laughs> you want to take us to Reddit, <laughs> Simeon? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the land of man. Uh, the you see what I mean? Subreddit has a ton of people subscribed, and yet it's one of the most inactive communities that we have. Sadly, seven point six thousand members and only twenty four online. And I guarantee those twenty four aren't browsing this subreddit right now. But yes, uh, WizKids HeroClix has an official Reddit page now, I guess. And they posted a spoiler. So yeah, this was posted by user WizKids Official four days ago. And they said, we are excited to see the, this community flourish in an appreciation. He, so I think they're trying to maybe bring some people to Reddit because this post is like the biggest post that this page has seen in quite a long time. 131 that. upvotes. Love that word. Uh, 24 comments. It's pretty popping uh, post. But yeah, they, they post a spoiler. So I'll click on it so I can actually see the, the spoiler. Ah, yes. It is the sculpt, the digital rendering, I believe. This I don't know. It's so hard because this could be... No, this is the digital rendering because the dial's blank. Um, I was going to say it could be the actual sculpt. But uh, it is the digital rendering of Amit, the s not snake an alligator god with a snake medallion thing wrapped around it a snake uh, belt yeah it's like a cobra isn't it hmm. yeah so Amit is the bad god I guess you could say I don't think they really are good and bad ones I think they just the antagonist the one uh, yeah to Moonlight, the antagonistic yeah yeah the, this force of nature isn't something that humans want I guess unless you're harrow and then you do uh so yeah, this is the Harrow's deity, the one that like, he worships through the Moon Knight series, and he has that little staff that he weighs and scales like the whatever, the soul. Um, but anyhow, Amit has Power Cosmic and Mystic's team abilities, number 056 in the set, unique, so it is a chase is the avatar of the um, of Amit trait is the first one. This is a sideline active, just like Conchu, just like Tarit that we saw. Uh, so if they have the, what is it, avatar? Uh, 10 points to choose somebody to be Amit's avatar. If they have uh, the herald keyword, then they pay zero points instead. 
can't be equipped or chosen by any other ga- uh, character's avatar this game. And then Amit's avatar can use poison and steal energy and also scores the points paid with this trait when they are KO'd. So I think this will probably see use on av- uh, not avatars, on heralds. But one of the best heralds in the game right now already has steel energy, so I don't know if we'll see it on that one. That, of course, being Carnage Silver Surfer. I do think giving poison or steel energy to just anyone for 10 points is pretty solid. I know the Remaker Ring was poison shape change, and that got quite a bit of use, so I think that this could see play uh, paying the actual points point value. And uh, Amit here has a second trait that is Serve Me and Find Peace, Invincible. When Amit is KO'd, you may choose a friendly character and deal one damage to each opposing character within two squares of that character. If that character is Amit's avatar, this game that character has, this character deals penetrating damage. And that trait is Protected Pulse Wave. So you would have to be main forcing Amit for, to use that trait. It would have to be on your team. And then you would also have to be... Uh, choosing somebody that isn't Amit. So this isn't like a Cathan situation where you could choose Amit for their own sideline thing. But uh, yeah, pretty decent. Amit gets KO'd, and Amit is like a big enough threat where they're going to want to KO it. They're not just going to leave it there. And then you get to just deal one damage to each opposing character within two squares. It's not penetrating damage, but still, dealing damage could take some characters out if they're on like a stop click or something. Speaking of stop clicks, Amit has Ooh. two of them. Click three and six, six click long dial, and that is Goddess of the Underworld. Stop, regeneration, regeneration as free. So, again, traded invincible, and then stop clicks. So, there. I was going to originally go into how weird it is that there's no reducer on the dial and no reducer on the stop click, but traded right. invincible. So just keep that in mind. The dial itself, the first two clicks, there's only one point value. It's 125. First two clicks are Charge, Quake, Combat Reflexes, and Exploit Weakness. And Amit is giant size. So it's a very green, heavy top dial. Click three is where we get that first stop click, and that is Plasticity, Poison, the Stop Regen, Regen as Free, and Prob Control. And then on clicks four and five, it's really interesting. We get Sidestep, Pulse Wave, Regeneration, Shape Change. And keeping in mind, this is a character that is cosmic energy and traded invincible, so reducing a whole lot of damage, and also mystics, so dealing back a whole lot of damage. And then click six just mirrors that same click three, where it is plasticity, poison, regeneration, stop click, and probability control. I think this is a really good pull and sealed, obviously. I I think so too. But this feels really solid, because... I can pay I can pay 10 points, give someone on my team poison and steel energy, play Omit, then I also get the other half of if they KO Omit, I'm going to like be dealing out extra damage and there's not a ton of reducers in this set. There's like some, there's quite a few like people with toughness or whatever, but like there's some goon and uh martial artist type people who aren't as yeah. heavy on the reducer end. So I think that could do a lot and then also just how much damage you would have to do to this character while taking Mystics. If you don't get them off the stop click, they have regen. Regen is free. They've got giant willpower. Um, even if you get them past that first one, then you're putting them on like a pulse wave click, and that's not a great option. Still have regen on the pulse wave click. So, yeah, like just very dangerous character and sealed all around. Obviously, I think anything that is sideline active and can potentially cost zero or only 10 points yeah. to play probably going to see some play in the competitive scene um definitely yeah and then i i yeah, do no, like it no. i think that it's a good casual piece too because it's got animal cosmic deity mystical ruler themes with a ton of fun stuff i don't know i i think it's going to be one of the ones that i want to get i think just there's only three egyptian gods i think we have we have the full set list so yeah there's only three yeah, egyptian only gods three I think collecting all three of them is attainable. That's an aspirational thing that I can try. Do you feel like they will probably be the most expensive? Like, besides Kevin as an Ultra Chase, the True. three Egyptian gods are probably the most expensive thing in the set, I imagine, just for how competitive they're going to be. I do agree with you, though, about Ahmet. I think she's well, she's definitely the heaviest-hitting Egyptian god, the 12-4 exploit charge. Um, 
just 21 kind of from beats close. out like yeah the 21 from close and i think defensively she's also the best because having traded invincible is better than because the other ones have reducers top dial but then they lose them whenever they get on their stop clicks or those like regen kind of clicks so i think this is just like the beefiest one and probably going to be the hardest one to take out in sealed just because they have invincible the entire time combined with those stop clicks versus like whatever con she just like doesn't have anything on those clicks at all so being able to crack that 21 first or at the very least a 20 from range if you put her in some hindering terrain like dang this is going to be stout with the free regen and everything so i don't know i like i like her the most as a sealed piece i think 125 points something about all the gods just feels like 125 just feels fair i guess it doesn't feel like over costed but it just feels like it's not like a deal, you know? It's not like Carnage Surfer or Prime Spider-Man where it's like, oh, wow, this for 50 points? What a deal. 125 just feels fair, which yeah. is a good thing. But it's definitely just like, yeah, that's yeah, it's probably 125 points, and it'll be pretty tough to take out. So I don't know. I really like her as a sealed pick. I don't know if, like, competitively you ever play any of the gods at 125. I don't think so. But this in, like, sealed or a Battle Royale, man, ugh. She could mess some things up, like really mess some stuff up. I could see it if like the 400 um, theme keeps getting played places. I could see somebody trying to main force one of these, and I don't think it'd be the craziest thing. I think um, we've seen some like high costed characters do decent in like that 400 range True. with with the very few events that we have of that. So that's Ahmet jumping over. We got to see more dials. We got to see Spog Root and man bowl we're gonna save the groots for the full set review just because that's probably the best time to talk all yeah. of the, the funny little groots and whatnot so i'll jump into i believe our last member of the obama stay therapy group that we needed to round out the team he is a super rare he's 045 in the set obama stay animal brute and warrior those are his keywords for old man bowl he does ignore blocking terrain when he moves through he destroys it Zero range, one target. He's got seven clicks of life. And, you know, pretty solid stats. He's got charge the entire time. He's got quake for his first three clicks. He's got some invulnerability and power. And then he rolls on to some toughness support later on. He is an 8, 11, 18, 4 top dial with charge, quake, invulnerability, and empower, which is pretty solid. He has the Obama State Mindfulness trait, which is free. Remove an action token from Manbolt. If you do, you give an action token to a friendly character with the Obama State here within four squares. Pretty solid, just kind of keep tokens off of him, or you can just toss tokens on him, although that's really Porcupine's role in the Obama State group is just get tokens tossed on him. And then his trait is, and well, that's triggering for me. It gives him just all caps knockback. When Man Bull attacks an opposing character, modify his attack plus one for each red standard power that they can use. Pretty solid, he's seeing red, classic matador, red flag, bull, whatever pretty fun so if they have three red powers on dial uh it doesn't say printed either it just says each red standard power they can use so actually if they have traded super senses or flurry or whatever then you actually will get a plus one for that so potentially if they got three or more red powers you'll be a 14 for four top dial punching a a red powered person the only thing i would change about man bull i think this is pretty solid I do just wish a lot of our bull characters, the Minotaurs from like the Captain America set, had like a full speed charge where it kind of shows that he just right. rushes in head for. That's the only thing I would have liked to see with Man. Similar bull. to like a, a Ram kind of ability. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, yeah, without being like Ram, where it's just kind of that big full rush in, quake, whatever, big hit. But the the red thing is very thematic. It's cool. You know, having knockback all the time is also great. He's an 11 attack the entire time, never goes below three damage. So that's really cool. I would just have liked to see some like a special speed power, which is just like charge, move full speed or something would have been cool. But Mamble here, he's pretty solid. I think he'll be a pretty solid sealed and a battle royale pick as he just has solid reducers up front. And he's 11 for four charge piece is never bad. So he's pretty fun little piece. He rounds out. There's a just a ton of. The Obama State group is just a ton of attackers, close attackers especially, so Manbull is one of the better ones at that, which is straight up high raw stats versus needing uh, special situations for like El Aguila or any of the other ones. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to be so, a, a fun casual team. I wish they were all common to rare 
so that they could have been like a pulp team. But mm. I think yeah. I agree with you there. Yeah, it is a little bit of a bummer having at least three of them be super rares, and then I think we still don't know. But yeah, we already know all the cur. So yeah, that means a. Abomination is also going to be like a super rare or something. No, we do know that. Yeah, we saw the set list. So yeah, it is kind of a bummer having like four of the Abomination State group all be like super rares. Yeah, but Luckily, jump- there's enough cheap ones that you could still do it in uh, pulp. It just that is true. Record the She cool Hulk, ones. the Just Emil Blonsky. Yeah, I guess there is a handful. It's pretty solid amount. Next up, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. <laughs> Handful of listener questions this week over on the Discord, aka the Patreon. I already did the plug for that, so I'm not going to do it again. His own Bill asks, with Adepticon coming up and WizKids hiring someone to be their community manager, how many big tournaments a year is the right number? I feel like we all agree that currently we have too few, but too many would oversaturate the community. This is kind of an interesting predicament that Bill's talking about here. I personally think if we could run, it it depends on what major is, but I do think pseudo qualifiers to state tournaments could be running every two or so months. And then the big tournaments, Worlds, Adepticon, Nationals happen whenever they happen. So basically, if we went back to regional qualifiers, whether that be a WKO style or something else, every like two, three months, quarterly, whatever. I think that'd be pretty solid. Right now, it feels like there's not enough, there's plenty of creativity in the game, but I feel like too many people play it too safe when they go to these bigger events because there are just so few, just 300 modern events that even happen every year that it's like, why would I ever experiment? Experimenting is just for practice or whatever. So we don't get to see as much crazy wacky stuff during modern right now when we only have like, Kind of what it feels like, literally just Nationals, Worlds, and now this year, Adepticon, really, and then I guess Florida. So right. three official, one pseudo, you know, starting to be official. So we, I, we don't get enough for there to be creativity. So personally, Bill, I would like to see one every two months, a quote unquote major event, whether that be like a Nationals, a Worlds, an Adepticon, a Champion Click, stuff like that. I think every two months would be pretty solid. Does that mean everybody would always be able to go to them? No, and I think that's fine. I don't think everybody needs to go to every single major tournament. Um, But I would just like to see that much, and maybe if we don't want to do major, major ones, at the very least, every two months, do some kind of regional qualifier for an area where people can choose to go to if they want to or not. Um, So yeah, something like that. Every two months, I would like to see a qualifier and then all of our major tournaments still happen when the major tournaments happen what about you Simeon I agree I think um putting more out there for the community so there's like more smaller events like local events and people can start traveling again and like getting some good uh OP kit kind of like pricing for those where it's like makes it worth traveling but not like necessary to you know it's not like a big event that you have to like go if you want to get the stuff kind of thing or at least having options of where you go to get the thing. Um, But yeah, I think, I think the hero click community could handle four big events a year, maybe even five. I think five would be pushing it where like you wouldn't see everyone at all of them. You would see maybe different people at each one. I don't know. I personally, like I, if I were playing competitively, I think I would just keep it to like the big three or like, you know, nationals and worlds for sure if i'm worried about actually like placing at places and stuff those are the two that really matter as far as what is like a big official title kind of thing but if there were like three or four or five and i was really wanting to grind away and get some get some goodies and also get better at the game i could see myself going to five a year i think that's not doable for everyone but it's definitely possible if you're able to drive yeah, I agree. All right, Bill. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you like those answers, Mister Mister Will Thirty Roche. The D Man asks, "How superstitious are you when it comes to dice? Do you change out your dice mid game if they are rolling really poorly? I've seen lots of players do that. I know a player who turns their dice to have sixes facing up between rolls to train them. Maybe you just have a favorite set of lucky dial each dice you always use." I'm really not superstitious at all. I'll usually stick with a pair of dice 
for whatever game or day I'm rolling and just keep rolling it. Um, I think the dice superstition is fine for some people. I hate when people do it in between rolls where if they miss a roll and like, oh, got to switch dice. And anything that makes a game take longer or stalls out the game or wastes time, I am very not a fan of. So switching out dice mid game, I don't care for. Um, there was only one time where I did that, and that's when I rolled three crit misses in a row. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I think I will change these dice. Like, it has to be pretty severe to make me change dice more than just missing. It's got to be like, dang, these things actually might just be totally weighted wrong. Um, and then as far as, like, a favorite set of dice, my all-time favorite are the Earth-X Captain America dice from the Earth-X Dice and Token Pack. And then, obviously, the Dial H dice are just so sick. I love rolling them. They just look amazing from all stand up. I don't know. What do you think, Simeon, when it comes to dice superstition? Yeah, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Uh, okay. No, that's an old Mitch Hedberg joke. Um, I, yeah, I, I know that there is a statistical probability f- for each roll. And obviously, like, that changes, like, how often you would roll, like, sevens in a row or eights in a row or whatever. But. I don't think swapping dice can affect that. I think, you know, maybe there's like something to say about a way that you like roll a certain pair of dice where, you know, if you've got the sixes up and you like palm them away, away, like you could potentially like roll more regularly high rolls. I don't know. I haven't looked into that, but I, I don't believe it. I think switching dice or not, it's not going to change things. I will find myself in a game favoriting a certain set of dice for like my single d6 rolls and uh for my attack rolls so i'll have like one set that i use for d6 rolls one set sometimes and then as far as uh somebody that like puts the sixes facing up actually yeah i've done that before i don't i think i just like the way it looks aesthetically though i don't think it's because i think that they'll roll a six if i like they're not going to get fixed into place by (laughs) just sitting there but yeah uh not really superstitious on dice rolls i at the end of the day i know that it's just math and you know it's possible it's entirely possible that you roll 20 crit rits and 20 crit misses in a row uh but it's highly improbable so yeah uh favorite set of dice um i think my go-to set is just like the these weird gold and red uh they're like supernatural dice i don't even remember where i got them i don't even know if they're tied to a certain game or show they've got kind of like weird runes and stuff it does remind me of like the supernatural tv show but i can't imagine why somebody would have a set of dice for that unless it was just i don't know out there already but uh that is my go-to especially if i'm playing like a mystics team it just kind of fits and that's kind of what i do is i just try and theme my team with the dice so if i'm playing justice league then i'm you know rolling my justice league dice if i'm playing avengers i'm rolling something that makes sense for avengers same with like if the majority of my team's spider-man friends or adjacent like you know that's like the the crux of the team is spider-man or something i might roll my spider-man dice but it just yeah just depends next up the maggot asks in the last design insights form whiz kids talks about why they are splitting martial artists and marksmen do you guys think there are any other keywords that need this treatment and what would they be split into? I really like, just like really quickly before we get too much into this, I really like the split between martial artist and marksman. I think it's really cool. I think you can kind of show off that I get it. A lot of comic characters, people and writers just like to be like, oh yeah, by the way, they're black belt and uh, whatever. You know, it feels like that's always rushed in a lot of storylines where it's like, yeah, no, totally. Of course, uh, before Captain America went and fought in World War II, uh, he like learned five different martial arts. Yeah, no, of course he did. You know, like stuff like that. They like to, like tack on or whatever. It doesn't make a lot of sense for some characters. It's like, yeah, no, Punisher. Yeah, of course he's a black belt. Why wouldn't Punisher be? So I really like the difference in marksmen for like Winter Soldier, the Hawkeyes, Bow and Arrow people, Green Arrow, whatever, uh, Punisher, Deadshot, stuff like that. As far as a keyword split goes. Someone mentioned it in our Discord, and I pretty much agree, maybe not to the exact extent, but I think scientist is too broad right now. We give any, like, doctor, medical person, they also get scientist, and I get that medicine is a science, but then also every mechanical engineer, 
uh, also gets scientist, or yeah. every just kind of brainiac dude it's weird when, like, gets scientist. Doctor Claire Finn is able to team up with Spider Man because they're both scientists. It's like, well, they do very right. different. Things. Like, one is a doctor in like the future. The other is someone who's basically like really good at engineering and like chemistry and stuff. Right. Like, I wouldn't trust Peter Parker to do surgery on me. Yeah. Like, maybe more <laughs> yeah. so than the average person, but yeah, not like the Claire Finn's level. So that's one, I don't know, that I would like to split. Um, what were some of the ones? They had, like, Engineer as one of them. And I don't hate Mechanic or Engineer necessarily as keywords. Let's see, that was asked in questions as well. Yeah, Scientist would, could get split into Mechanic or Engineer. Uh, yeah, there's also, like, Mad Scientist and stuff. I think I think something, some kind of, like, I don't want to call it like healthcare professional. That's a weird keyword. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Um, but there, there definitely should be a split for scientists because right now scientist is this over encompassing keyword that yeah, I think could, do could easily be split. A split between like PhD and MD. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like that'd be, that also wouldn't be great for keyword usage, but no. it would make sense. Yeah, or doctor. I guess you can make a doctor keyword. Uh, Kind of weird, kind of a weird one, but I don't know the exact generic keyword to use for that, but I think it just should be split. Uh, I know people in the next phase dial and evidence thread on HC Realms mentioned a few times how it seems podcaster keyword is basically a split from reporter. And oh, sure, I, I see that where it's like a podcast, it's kind of like what we're doing, we're kind of reporting, but I could also see that being like kind of a split from like. Dare I say celebrity? Hmm. Yeah, Maybe I a little bit. But, you yeah. know, kind of a little bit. Entertainer. Because there's when, kind of like an you know, Some reporters are celebrities in their own right, too. That like is people true. know Dan Rather and stuff like that. Yeah. Absolutely. They they do. Uh, <laughs> Dan? That's the 60 Minutes guy. Rather. Oh, okay. Perfect. 60 Minutes guy. Yeah, then I, I know, know that one. I guess I, then I definitely up, know that but... one. I guess if he's a 60 Minutes guy. I know his name. I couldn't picture his face, but. He did, he did stuff. So, yeah. Besides, without the podcaster keyword, how else can we guarantee we'll get Joe Rogan into hero clicks? Come oh, on. No. Oh, I know. <laughs> Hated it as soon as I said it. Focus Joe Rogan, where he goes from, like, yeah, he'll have his uh, quote-unquote podcaster dial, and then he'll also have his kickboxing dial, and then his uh, MMA commentary yeah. dial. His bow hunting his dial. Fear his factor dial. His eating elk meat dial. Yeah. His his thc dial maybe not that one <laughs> maybe don't make that one yeah there's some there's some fun stuff in there i don't know what do you think simian what are some keywords that you might think could be split up i know we talked about i don't remember if it was during a live or if it was one of the episodes but we talked about how they could split mystical into two where it'd be you know people who are actually magic users or like they actually have like power that like is mystical or whatever and then people that had magic done to them, like Werewolf mm. by Night doesn't shoot like blasts of, you know, like eldritch energy out of his hands right. or cast spells or anything, but he is cursed with like a spell or whatever. So like same with Wendigo, same with, there's just like a few people where it's, it makes sense for them to be in the mystical realm, but it doesn't make sense for them to be mystical uh, and so I actually, I like how it is because I like being able to theme those together. But if we wanted to get a little bit more pedantic with keywords and like split things up, I think that would make a lot of sense. I like that one. That kind of makes sense too, though, to me. I kind of dig it where it's like, you're not Dr. Fate, dude. You're just a guy that has now a supernatural element about you. It's kind of, yeah, I don't like that. And then the last question we have here is from Wesley R. If Disney gave WizKids permission to do a Star Wars theme set, what would you want to see? Let your imagination go wild. Discuss. I really hate to be a bomber, but we've got this question a handful of times about like a Star Wars set. And yeah, I really just hate to say it, but I honestly don't think I would care for Star Wars to be in Hero Clicks, and people can hate that as much as they want but like Simi and I have talked about it a lot where we don't think the dials would be terribly interesting because of it every Jedi's power set is very similar every Stormtrooper pretty much very similar just a dude that runs and shoots running shot toughness 
precision strike pensai whatever you know um the sif could be eviler versions of basically the exact same power set sword uh, and force maybe have battle fury on them yeah Whoa, a little like, eviler some yeah. negative perplex i guess steel energy yeah no it would so, it yeah. makes plenty of sense in the star wars universe like that the star wars universe could translate to hero clicks it's kind of the same problem with like gears of war or just like any property where yes like the the interesting thing about the characters is their own personalities whereas their actual abilities are all very similar i think that's where the issue comes in you'd have to make like a specific like very specific version of like darth vader like this is the force lightning version of darth vader and then that's his dial and almost every like main character like that would then have to have a shifting focus or a 200 point dial where they go from you know uh choke out like a officer and then get into a laser sword fight and then use force lightning like by the end of the dial. i don't know it would just mm, have to yeah. be either shifting focus i think is the only way or i guess they could just do like five of each character it doesn't necessarily have to be shifting focus um but yeah you'd have to pick very specific versions because as far as jedi go like Almost all of them would have access to half the PAC. I mean, if not more. Yeah. Maybe three quarters of the PAC. I think you would have to, like you said, make it very, very specific. Like, okay, we make a Darth Sidious. He has to be, like, all about mastermind behind the scenes and then just straight up lightning or something. Right. And then we'd have to, if you made Anakin, it would have to be turning to the dark side or whatever you know you can't just give each jedi like one jedi would have to be really really good at sword stuff one jedi would have to be great at the force one would have to be specifically good at like deflecting the shots back with the lightsaber because you couldn't really give that to everyone and it would just feel so boring um so it would, it would, each jedi would just have to be a specific aspect of what a jedi can do versus like a well-rounded one otherwise they all feel so similar um General Grievous, I would say, would probably be the coolest one if they made him, because then he could do, like, four attacks in a turn or just something sick. So that maybe that's worth it. Just make Star Wars clicks. We get General Grievous, and he's just a beast. Also but shifting then, focus, because he can, like... Turn into his weird spider yeah, body. Do, like, something. spider body hypersonic and, like, uh, hard to hit, and then go to, yeah, the, forearm pinwheel lightsaber yeah. man try to make it very specific to the movie where it's like Obi-Wan Kenobi, Phantom Menace, very much learning how to do something. He's like the Robin to Qui-Gon Jinn's Batman or something. And then teaching Obi-Wan Kenobi from Clone Wars. And then like Jedi Master, full-fledged Obi-Wan. I, I actually like the idea of a branch of the Sith Obi-Wan who has like blasters so uncivilized who's like free once per game, make a range attack <laughs> or something. Like that'd be kind of funny from his fight with General Grievous. They would just, yeah, it'd have to be very specific versions. If they did a Star Wars Iconics, this, I think, would be better than a Star Wars set. So let's say you make a Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker battle on Mustafar. Their bases connect. They're on their weird floating things with some lava on the base. That's amazing. That's beautiful. If you make, like, a, a New Hope Iconics, and it's, like, Chewie, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke... Old Man Ben, uh, Darth Vader, or something that could be very, very good. Maybe a just I think I think Iconics, yes. I think a full set, no. Yeah. I think if you did Iconics for like each movie and you did the main crew, main cast for each movie, and then maybe you did a kind of how they're coming out with the Starro fights or something where it's like these are where you get your generic stormtroopers. Oh, yeah, the, like whatever. The, those bago things that they yeah, the bag yeah thing. reuse like a sculpt, so like. Maybe you have Commander right. Rex in, like, the Clone Wars one. Right. And then, yeah, you just, like, repaint him as generic trooper and release so, him. Yeah, that'd be cool. We, we started off a little negative, a little not super into it. But I think if they did, yeah, an Iconics for each movie, and it was, like, five very well-thought-out characters versus, like, a full set, I think that's probably the best way to do it, where everything doesn't feel bad i guess or overused or non-unique or whatever i think that would be really cool how likely do you think we are to because we've done at this point two like disney proper things with uh disney disney, disney plus next in the phase. next phase yeah yeah 
I don't know. I would really like to see it. You know, they haven't made a Disney movie outside of a Marvel thing since The Lone Ranger in oh, 2013, yeah. I want to say. So I would like to see it. The Star Wars license is so weird. And there's already a miniature Star Wars, game for it, too. Do they have a miniatures game right now? I guess they have Attack Wing, right? Um, they have Attack whatever. Wing, but there's no, there's like an actual, like, I don't know if it's an active game or if it's dead, but there you, I think it's like Star Wars Legion, where there's miniatures oh, okay. that you can... They're like sprue based. You can put them together and then paint them. Mm. And they have like cards and stuff. I gotta say, if I could have any Star Wars game, I'd obviously prefer it to be Hero Clicks 100%. I know just today, which is very annoying, at Dragon's Lair today, there was some kind of opening event for some Star Wars card game that uh, sadly took up a lot of play space from us Hero Clicks players when I thought Sundays were supposed to be our day at Dragon's Lair. Uh, don't know what's going on there but then yeah there was like 10 15 people like a decent amount of people for this like star wars tcg first opening whatever learn to play thing and i'm just like you guys could probably be playing hero clicks right now you're playing a lame card game <laughs> those cards don't even go to anything they're just cards these cards have cool figures with cool dials that look dope my cards are way cooler than your cards just saying but uh no, I didn't actually have any anti-card game rhetoric for the people uh, playing that day. I was just mildly miffed that they were taking up so much space, even though we could still play fine. I was like, mm, but you should all be playing hero clicks instead. How dare you? So, yeah. Anyways, hopefully that helps answer your question there, Wesley. Oh, I guess, ooh, like a Bad Batch Iconics. Yeah, there's probably quite a few just iconic sets you could do yeah. that I would like for Star Wars versus making a full set. I think I think a and full think, set would ruin some of the specialtyness of it. Yeah, but like I would definitely Millennium rather Falcon see it as Box, like an Iconics Trooper, than like a Box. starter. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I, I think Iconics would be the way to go with Star Wars. Whether it be like the movie poster is the front of the box or like Millennium Falcon, Darth Vader's helmet, some cool stuff like that would be kind of neat. But anyways, guys, that is all we have. Once again, not a whole lot happening right now. Hopefully before Adepticon comes out, we'll be able to do a Disney Plus Next Phase set review. Or at the very least, the week before or so, we'll do a set review with what we have. Chatting about uh, good picks, we think, for Adepticon, Super Seals, or Battle Royales. Maybe even mix in some original Disney Plus talk for stuff like that. So you can look forward to that. The second Adepticon sealed game will be coming up this week sometime. Uh, on our YouTube channel between Simeon and I kind of shows you again what Adepticon Sealed might be liked for those that are planning to go. As well as we're planning on next week hopefully having a big IPF episode going into all the cool tournaments that are going to be happening for the IPF. As well as how you, that's right, you, an international listener, a non-American international listener, could get your trip funded to the United States for Memphis, Tennessee Worlds in September. So stay tuned on all this cool, exciting uh, Dial H stuff that's coming down the pipeline soon. Absolutely. And if you want to, I don't know, at this point, still pre order some next phase, or maybe just pick up some old singles that you haven't uh, picked up lately, you should check out coolstuffinc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including your latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Use code DIAL5 when you do to save 5% off your order. And if you want to go direct to the source, where I know you can pre-order these things, you might want to go to shop.wizkids.com and see what kind of promotions they're running, because they run promotions all the time. And when you go there, you can use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of your order. It doesn't work for specialty figures, iconics, pre-releases. I don't know. I think we should probably message them and see if that's updated or if that's just all but some of those things it might not always work maybe it's supposed to we should we'll check we'll check listener but for ah. now that's what it works on and like always everybody for all your hero clicks content podcasts youtube videos and more make sure you dial h bye felicia so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks help Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going there that's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah, six people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from Canada. Yeah. Yeah. We have seen the costume. And my bones are metal. Are you kidding? Wow, wow, wow. Should I leave that in?
I mean, if you want to leave the bye Felicia in, that's that's fine. For the culture, that's fine. <laughs> I'll think about it. Okay. <laughs>